Welcome to Faculty Insight, brought to you by Harvard Extension School in partnership with ThoughtCast. I'm Jenny Atia, and I'm speaking with Henry Leitner, the Associate Dean for Information Technology and Chief Technology Officer at Harvard's Division of Continuing Education and a Senior Lecturer on Computer Science at Harvard. Henry, you also oversee the distance education initiatives here at Harvard Extension School. And in fact, we're in a control room where many of these courses are recorded. Online education's become a pretty hot topic these days. Why so? Well, I think uh, the general public has become more comfortable with online technologies and with taking courses online. Uh, when we first started experimentally doing courses in this fashion more than 12 years ago, uh, we restricted them to computer science courses, to courses where uh, the individual students were comfortable with technology and were willing to uh, debug really the uh, software and the hardware, which back then was a bit finicky. But as you know, over the last few years, uh, internet bandwidth has gotten more widespread, uh, hardware and software has gotten more reliable, and students are online a lot. Interestingly, Harvard Extension School has a history of using technology to educate people. Yes, part of the Extension School's mission has been traditionally, and the Extension School has been around for a bit more than 100 years, to experiment and innovate uh, with teaching technologies that enhance the learning for adults. Well, in addition to your distance learning oversight activities, you also direct the Master of Liberal Arts and Information Technology program at the Extension School. And I believe you recently had a chance to Skype with one of the candidates for this degree, a young Swiss fellow from Zurich. All right, I'm here with Gabriel Haase, a candidate for the ALM in IT at the Harvard Extension School. And I'd like for you just to say a few words about how you came upon the ALM in IT program living where you are in Zurich, Switzerland. The first course I actually took uh, wasn't meant to be for the ALM in IT. I took a course actually to do a career change, to, to go towards web development, and I had to learn Ruby and Rails. And my first take was to, to look around here in Zurich what uh, options there were. But uh, Harvard Extension School was actually the, the only place that gave me the flexibility to really do it aside the career, like learn at the times I can learn and, and do it in the evening. Most programs had fixed uh, schedules during the week, and I couldn't apply to that. So um, I took the first course with John Norman. It was uh, the Ruby and Rails course, and it was a really great experience. And I was going to ask you a question about the online experience in general. I mean, you're watching the classes after they've happened, I imagine, rather than in real time. And how did you feel about learning in that format? Yeah, it's, uh, it's actually, it, it took a while to, to get used to it, to the idea that uh, you watch the course not while, it happen, uh, while it's happening, but you can still be a part of it. Nowadays, in a lot of courses, I, I send email or, or um, forum posts before class, and, and particularly for, for points that I want to have discussed in class. And, and then the professor takes it up, and this gives you a, a much more uh, feeling of, of being a part of it, um, while you're not really watching while it's happening. Henry, if the overall mission of the distance learning initiative is to spread education as widely as possible, many of these courses are available online for free. That's right. And, you know, if you watch what's going on in the news over the last year, there has been also tremendous growth by organizations such as Coursera and edX, which is an initiative that was jointly started by Harvard and MIT to offer courses for free online. Our Open Learning Initiative is an example of that, what is sometimes called a MOOC, a massively open online course. But how can Harvard or MIT, for that matter, give away its prized assets for free? Well, it's an interesting question. So, I mean, on the one hand, you could have the worry that it will hurt enrollments at Harvard Extension School, that offering a course in the open format where anybody can watch and learn on their own uh, would somehow lower the enrollments for the courses when they're taking place on campus. But we've actually seen that's not happened. What's happening, I think, is that students who are really interested in accreditation, in getting evaluated by real human teaching fellows and having an affiliation or an association with a faculty member are still going to enroll in the bricks and mortar version or in the online corresponding version that the Extension School offers. 
because with the, uh, the MOOC phenomenon, when you've got 100,000 students, you're largely restricted to grading and assessing students in automated ways that don't allow educated and highly trained individuals, such as the teaching assistants, with whom you would confide normally when you're stuck uh, problem solving or doing other kinds of homework assignments. Distance learning, online learning is a move towards democratizing education. Absolutely. Part of the democratization, you know, if you read some of the popularized accounts of what's going on is to see that in parts of the world, for example, where women are traditionally not allowed outside the home, they are now having access for the first time to high level uh, education, either through, you know, Harvard's initiatives or through others uh, that they would not have had just a few years ago. There are a lot of heartwarming stories that are coming forth. In fact, Drew Faust, the president of Harvard, spoke about a trip that she took last year to India where among the questions she was asked is, how can Harvard do more to help educate their large masses of people? And it turns out that one of the open courses that's being offered today, in addition to the computer science course, is a course from the School of Public Health. And there are some 9,000 individuals in India who are enrolled in it, many of them medical professionals, and 150 of them are actually getting together in real life to discuss the coursework. So, you know, it's these sorts of heartwarming stories that make it, you know, completely relevant to Harvard's mission to continue pushing the frontiers in online education. Henry Leitner, thank you very, very much for your time. You're very welcome. Thank you. You've been watching Faculty Insight, brought to you by Harvard Extension School in partnership with ThoughtCast. I'm Jenny Atia. Thanks for joining us.